What's going on, everybody? You got me, Real, and uh, Andrew, my boy, here. <laughs> Let's talk to you today about some fantasy football. Listen, you're looking at two champions right here, so we're going to get right into it. And, uh, um, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is it might be a controversial list, but we're going to get right into it right away. We're going to start off with number 10, okay? And we're, we're going to go back and forth. So, Andrew, I'm going to have you take this one. Who do you, as a, who do you have as our number 10 quarterback this year? So... I know you said controversial, and man, the first thing I thought about is people are going to hound us over this one. <laughs> I have Deshaun Watson at number 10. The dude is so talented. I mean, he can make plays with his legs and his arm, but when you lose a top three wide receiver in the league, there's no way you're going to sustain that production. And then they brought in David Johnson. They brought in Brandon Cooks to keep him fantasy relevant, but it's not the same. You don't have that top end uh, wide receiver that you're throwing the ball to that can get you touchdowns in the red zone. So I have him ranked as number 10 because he has a lot of talent and he should be able to produce. Yeah. And I'm just going to add on to this. So we're talking about a guy, a guy that had uh, almost, you know, 3,900 yards. He had 26 touchdowns passing. He had seven rushing touchdowns and over 413 yards rushing. So we're talking about a guy that's crazy, crazy talented. I love this guy coming out of the draft when he was drafted and he's on a team that you know, is a high powered offense. And it, it was at least when DeAndre Hopkins was there. And now that, like you said, that, that um, David Johnson's there, that's going to be great if they do have a running game. But, you know, that's a risk. You don't know 100% fact if he's going to be as good as he was in Arizona before his injuries. So it's hard to say. That's why we have him so low on this list. But then we're going to go into our number nine quarterback. And that is. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and honestly, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and, and talk about this. Aaron Rodgers is a guy that we don't really have to talk about how great he is. Everybody knows how talented he is as a player. But when, you know, LaFleur came into their um, uh, uh, team and he started coaching their team, they obviously went more run oriented. And you saw that Aaron Jones was killing it. And even though he was catching a lot of balls, Jamal Williams was catching a bunch of balls. And now they have A.J. Dillon. Um, you know, we're talking about a team that doesn't really have wide receiver weapons outside of Devontae Adams, and that's a big, big problem. So with them going more run-oriented and with them not drafting a wide receiver in their first round, um, you know, that limits him. And, and, and I mean, he had 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns last year, and he was, a, he was the eighth quarterback overall, according to NFL.com. So fantasy-wise, of course. So obviously this guy is somebody that has high upside and a low floor so he's obviously a great great pickup to get minimum risk and a high upside so if you could get him later in the draft this year definitely definitely pick him up do you have anything to add on aaron Rodgers, or do you want to jump into our number eight pick so i i, I do want to touch on aaron Rodgers, and aaron Rodgers is used to being that gunslinger you know i'm gonna go and beat you with my arm now he doesn't have to do that all he has to do is manage the game he has Aaron Jones in the backfield, just destroying teams left and right. So now Aaron Rodgers has to pick and choose, you know, and he has Devonte Adams, who is a top 10 wide receiver as is. So he just needs to manage the clock, make minimal mistakes, and he'll be a top 10 quarterback going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that just jumps us into our number eight quarterback. So why don't you uh, tell the people who you think is our number eight? So, number eight is Mr. Dak Prescott over uh, in Dallas. Dak Prescott last year finished the league at number two in fancy points coming in the quarterback position, only behind Mr. Lamar Jackson. So, Dak almost threw 5,000 yards last year, and he had 2,000-yard receivers. Everyone knows Amari Cooper is really good, especially when healthy. Um, they have a good old line. They have a running back, and they just added – potentially the best wide receiver in the draft class and CD lamb. So now he has three receivers that could all go for over a thousand yards and a running game. There's no way he's not finishing top 10 this year, as long as he stays healthy. Absolutely. And let's not forget, he still has not signed a contract yet. So this is a contract year for Dak Prescott. And so was it. So it was as well last year. And let's see what he did. So, you know, I expect the same kind of production. You know, obviously they're going to want to use Zeke Elliott more. But, I mean, hey, man, they got Mike McCarthy in there now. No more Jason Garrett. They might be a real, real team to mess with finally, finally. So, all right. So that's going to take us into our next quarterback. And here is, in my opinion, another controversial one. We're talking about Kyler Murray. 
And you might say, I mean, that's not that controversial because he was the seventh overall quarterback last year in fantasy football, according to NFL.com. This is a guy that had 3,700 yards passing, 500 rushing, um, 20 touchdowns passing, uh, four touchdowns rushing. That that's that's a great great output. And now you're talking about adding the greatest wide receiver in the league and DeAndre Hopkins to his arsenal, man, this is going to be crazy. So he's a guy that a lot of people are going to sleep on. He can run, he can roll out of the pocket, and he has pretty good accuracy. I think that he's going to surprise a lot of people, but I wouldn't put him, you know, in my top 10 quarterbacks, um, just in general talent wise, because we haven't seen enough from him yet. But fantasy wise, this guy is going to be explosive. What do you have to add to that? So I actually want to touch base on that. I totally agree with you. This is just fancy. This is not our top 10 quarterbacks by any means. Um, dude, Kyler Murray came into the league as a rookie and outperformed a lot of pro athletes. You know, I mean, when I look at it, the first half of the season, they really tried to make him be a pocket passer. Once they unleashed that his ability to run the ball, he started producing so much more. And then you add the fact that Kenyon Drake finally got his time to run the ball and just play at the end of the season, along with D Hopkins coming in the league and you still have Fitz. I'm not coming to like, you know, joining the team and then you still have Fitz. They have a lot of talent on their team and rushing quarterbacks are just at an advantage when it comes to fancy points because you get 10 yards rushing, that's a point compared to 25 passing. So that adds a little bit more value to him. All right, so now we're going to get into our sixth ranked quarterback after Kyler Murray. So, Andrew, why don't you tell us who our sixth quarterback is? Oh, man. So, this is my favorite quarterback. Everyone that knows me knows I am a huge Lions fan. And no, this is not a biased pick because there's facts that support it. <laughs> um, so, number six comes in at Matthew Stafford. And he is coming off an injured uh 2019 season but before he got injured in eight games he was on pace for 5,000 yards uh almost 40 touchdowns and single digit picks that's a top five pick fantasy wise in my opinion but we're gonna keep it realistic and uh i'm gonna say that he has similar production because they added the uh uh deandre swift to the team which adds another presence at the run game as well as his ability to catch the ball and then you're bringing Galladay back you're bringing Marvin Jones back Danny Amendola and Hawkinson is in year two so if anything our team got better on the offensive side of the ball and I only see great things coming from Matthew Stafford this year oh yeah oh yeah you know I have to add something when we bring up Matthew Stafford <laughs> listen we are real Detroit Lions fans first of all <laughs> <laughs> So what I have to say is that, you know, maybe it is the Kool-Aid talk and maybe it is a little biased, but, you know, what happened the last time the NFL didn't have an off-season program? I'll tell you what happened. He got in contact with his boy, Calvin Johnson, because they're both living in Georgia. They played together, had some off-season routines behind the closed doors of, you know, uh, their own facilities and whatnot, away from all NFL official practices. And what did he do? He came out in 2011 and through 5,000 yards, 40 touchdowns. That's what he was on pace for in 2019. Oh my God, this whole offense is 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 bursting with talent. This we have weapons all across the board. Now we're now in our running game, uh, our tight ends, our wide receivers. Anywhere this guy throws it, he's gonna have he's gonna have uh, hands wide open for him. So I'm excited to see what happens, and I'm expecting another near. 5,000 yard year for Matt Stafford so I'm with you 100% on that and that's going to take us into our next quarterback and that is many many uh, say he's the GOAT uh, we don't know about that over here in the real Detroit Lions fans but <laughs> this year he's going to be great in fantasy and that is Tom Brady Yeah, obviously there's been a lot of news and controversy around Tom Brady this offseason um, after he went from New England to Tampa Bay and Let's just let's just call it how it is. Why did he go to Tampa Bay? Because of the weapons they have there. They have the best wide receiver duo in the league, bar none. You're talking about Mike Evans. You're talking about Godwin. They're unbelievable. And, and their tight end room was stacked before Gronkowski came out of retirement. You're talking about O.J. Howard. You're talking about Cameron Bray. Those are two great tight ends. And you're talking about adding Gronkowski. And I know he slimmed down. But he's still great, man. That that chemistry between Gronkowski and Tom Brady cannot go underlooked. So uh, that's going to be a high-powered offense. And then we're talking about Bruce Arians. He's a great, great, great coach. So do you have anything to add about Tom Brady? Oh, for sure. If you thought Jameis Winston was even remotely good last year, 
then you cannot be sleeping on my boy Tom Brady this year. Jameis Winston threw for over 5,000 yards and like 10,000 interceptions, it seemed like. You have Tom Brady. <laughs> I mean, you have Tom Brady now. The dude is very accurate, and he doesn't get a lot of turnovers. Last year, Tom Brady finished 11th at the quarterback position in fantasy points with only Julian Edelman. I mean, literally, they had no talent, really, as far as skill players. Now you add a top five wide receiver. Chris Godwin was a monster last year. You still you get Gronk back, arguably the best fantasy tight end ever. And then you still have O.J. Howard and Brashard Perriman as a speed receiver. I mean, I, as, as long as he stays healthy, I do not see Tom Brady finishing below five. And they even bolster their offensive line with their first pick in the draft, getting the top offense and tackle. So I only see great things coming out of uh, Tampa or you should call it Tampa, Tampa Bay. So, oh my <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, guys, when we're talking about Tom Brady, you know, when you're, when you're drafting a quarterback, there's some things you look at. And, and, and one of the things is their floor. You know, somebody like Tom Brady has a high floor. He's not going to be a guy that's throwing a million interceptions. He's not going to be a guy that's doing all these risky things. And when you're talking about, a quarterback being drafted not only do you look at the floor but the ceiling so when you're looking at a ceiling of a guy that has all of these offensive weapons he's never had that on new england yet he's always been a top quarterback in fantasy football so it's going to be an exciting year for him but now we're going to go into our number four quarterback on our list the fourth best quarterback fantasy wise and this um if, if you guys don't know this is the goat according to andrew <laughs> and that's yes, a little tease, uh debate that we might have with a fellow dsa member but andrew who do you have as our fourth quarterback on our list i got mr drew Brees. if you think <laughs> fancy quarterbacks if you don't think drew Brees, you probably have never won a championship the dude finishes top 10 every freaking year Five thousand yards 40 touchdowns this that he is a fantasy machine Last year, the dude was on pace for, I think it was like 4,500 uh, yards and like 30 plus touchdowns. And they added Emmanuel Sanders to their wide receiver core. That's probably the best second wide receiver he's ever had to play with in his entire career. On top of still having Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. And Kamara is in a contract year, which means that you know you're going to get a lot of value uh, production out of your running back spot. So... Drew Brees, upgraded wide receiver core. There's no way he's not finishing uh, top five. Absolutely. And, and again, again, like we just said with Tom Brady, this is like a prototypical fantasy quarterback. Low floor, high ceiling. Again, and his ceiling, Drew Brees' ceiling is higher than, than anybody or at, on par with anybody. So you really can't go wrong there. All right, now we're getting into our top three quarterbacks. So if your quarterback has been missed, you know, it, it might be in this top three, might not. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go right now into our number three quarterback. And to us, that is none other than Russell Wilson. <laughs> Russell Wilson is a beast. He has what they call the it factor. <laughs> and, and, and he's just clutch when it needs to come down to it. And last year, um, from a fantasy perspective, he had over 4,000 passing touchdowns 342 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns this guy he's he's efficient he has a low floor and a high ceiling there's nothing else to say about him he's great it really doesn't matter what his weapons are honestly he just gets it done and i love 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 russell wilson he's an absolute must take if he's still there in like the fifth round all right andrew who are you uh, uh, um, do you have anything to add in regards to Russell Wilson? Yeah, I mean, just like Drew Brees, <clears throat> Russell Wilson's lowest spot he's finished as a quarterback, as far as I know, is eighth. Eighth by the end of the season. He's led the league in fantasy points, uh, I think it was two years ago in 2017, at the quarterback spot. And then the other couple years sprinkled in between was only fourth overall at the quarterback spot. You're talking about you want production for your quarterback? Go out and get Russell Wilson, and I guarantee you, you'll have a starter there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and he'll be a cornerstone of your team as well. All right, now we're going to talk about our second quarterback on the list. So, man, it's getting right down to it. So um, let's let's just let's just jump into it, Andrew. So who is the number two quarterback in your opinion? So this was a very hard one. But at the number two spot, I got 
Lamar Jackson. The dude finished number one uh, as a fancy quarterback last year, and they got J.K. JK Dobbins in the draft. So not only were they already such a dominant run team, but then you went out and you got arguably the best running back in the draft class to pair with Mark Ingram and your run first team. Um, And then you have Hollywood Brown going into his second year. So I think with what Lamar had last year, they only improved and they're going to get better. So as long as Lamar can stay healthy and add that uh, the rushing points and that all those points that he gets on the ground, I mean, he's going to be a top five running back. Because like I said, running quarterbacks typically are valued more because you get more points on the ground than you do in the air. Absolutely. You do. That, that, that is 100% fact. But, but, you know, as we keep going through the list, we keep bringing up two main things, and that's floor and ceiling. Where do you see his floor? So... Most quarterbacks in his position in NFL history don't do well throughout their entire career because they're running quarterbacks. They take some huge hits. They get hurt. And if they just versus a team that knows how to scheme very well, they can get shut down, as we saw in the playoffs. They got shut down. And they got shut down hard. So his ceiling, top three quarterback for sure. But his floor is like middle of the pack, and it's only because of his rushing ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's that's something that when we were making this list, it's it's hard to talk about because you have guys that are proven like Drew Brees and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, but then you have these phenoms that have came into the league these past couple of years, and their ceilings look like some sky high, like we've never seen them before in fantasy football. Yet we just don't know if you know we don't have that many points of uh, of like a population to really gauge how consistent they can be year in and year out so the floor is a scary part when you're drafting him especially a guy like lamar jackson that's going to go in the higher rounds but i agree that the ceiling is just so high that he might not be uh worth passing up on so he's definitely going to be a guy to look at when you're drafting your team and now we're going to go into our number one guy. So um, I'm going to talk shortly about this, but I'm going to pass it over to you, Andrew. Um, this guy is obviously Patrick Mahomes, and we've seen what this guy can do. And it's been two years, so I think it's been a little more. I mean, we have a little more to base off of than Lamar Jackson. And we've seen this guy with the no look pass. We've seen this guy with just chucking it down the field. But really, the, I think the key to this guy's success is Andy Reid. Andy Reid's offensive scheming is like nothing we've seen before, and I love it. I love that they put their foot to the get, uh, pedal to the metal, and they keep going the entire... They don't care if they're up 20, they want to be up 27. You know what I mean? So, this is a team... This is a guy that I think his ceiling is higher than anybody else because of that reason. And I think that his floor, um, because we've seen two years of him right now, unlike Lamar Jackson, where we've only seen one, I think that we can safely say that his floor is pretty high. I mean, we're talking about MVP in his second year. I think that he is the greatest prospect in the quarterback position so far this year. What do you think about Patrick Mahomes? So you said the word love a couple times, and you know what I love? I I love a quarterback that no matter who gets hurt on his team, still produces at an elite level. I mean, the dude lost Tyreek Hill. You know, he he he, Kelsey was banged up. The running backs were were iffy. You know, ankle injuries here, ankle injuries there, and he still was just dominating the league. I mean, like I get it. He has Sammy Watkins and McCole Hardman, but the dude does so much for his team. He missed two games last season and finished six six in fantasy points for quarterback position i mean if he would have had those two games he would have been over 30 touchdowns and he would have been very close to 5,000 yards so when i look at it there's no way you cannot have mahomes as the number one quarterback he's finished six in his second year and he was the first in his first year as a full-time starter the only other quarterback i've seen this dominant was aaron Rodgers, and people were saying he was the go and he was this well, he's not anymore, and I'm just throwing some shade at him because I'm a Lions fan. But <laughs> Mahomes, Mahomes is looking like that player in the league right now. So if you want the best quarterback available for your spot on your roster, you're going to go out and get Mahomes because no matter who's on his team, he's going to perform for you, and he's going to put up a lot of points. Absolutely. So, guys, that was our top ten list, uh, but there's one thing we want to talk about. So it not only matters of getting the right quarterback it matters where you draft it so we're going to have another video coming out very soon about where successful fantasy football teams draft their quarterback what round 
who is going to be available at that time, who you might be passing up on, and the risks, the floors, the ceilings, all that, all that, all that. But, you know, talking about that a little, I did want to take a couple minutes in this video to talk about some of the honorable mentions from that did not make the top 10 list, but are honestly very capable of being top 10 fantasy options at the quarterback position. So, Andrew, you know, why don't you name a guy that didn't make the list but should definitely get an honorable mention? So being a Lions fan, we all know what it's like when your team leads the league and drop passes. And the guy that had the team lead the league and drop passes last year was none other than Carson Wentz. When he is healthy, he is arguably an MVP candidate. I mean, he is a very athletic quarterback, and he's done a lot with less than any other quarterback in the league. I mean, he lost Alshon Jeffrey to Sean Jackson last year for basically the whole season and had Nelson Aguilar as his number one receiver. And he put up over 4,000 yards and 27 touchdowns with nothing, nothing to throw to besides Zach Ertz. So when I look at what he did with nothing, that just gives me hope that, you know, you brought in a rookie that they think can be a good receiver. And then you also got your receivers that were hurt last year are healthy. So you got your receivers back. So he could easily be a top 10 quarterback last year, but going and looking at his health as well as what they do have around him that's why he didn't make the top 10 yeah yeah and uh one guy that i'm gonna bring up is matt ryan obviously atlanta's quarterback so he's a guy that there was no reason for him not to make the list really <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have an injury list history he has um julio jones on his team they just added todd Gurley, and they're looking like a team that's going to be a really really high powered offense but the only issue with that is that there were 10 quarterbacks that we thought were better. <laughs> but really, the other reason is is that Matt Ryan's kind of been inconsistent his entire career. And that that partially isn't his fault. During the years that he you know, had his most success. And he doesn't have that anymore. He hasn't had that for a couple of years. And he hasn't been that phenomenal as a fantasy option. So because of the inconsistencies and because of 10 other quarterbacks being very great he did not make the list but that doesn't mean he's not a great option in the later rounds if you can get an amazing running back in round one and skip on a patrick mahomes or lamar miller and then get a guy like matt ryan in like round seven round lamar, i'm just gonna correct you lamar jackson not lamar miller if you take lamar miller in the first round you're not winning shit <laughs> <laughs> And yes, we are keeping this in the video just for you. <laughs> so he's talking about Lamar Jackson. Or Everyone Patrick knew I meant Lamar Jackson, okay? <laughs> hey, it is what it is, man. Um, you know, it's been a long quarantine. We're all we're all dizzy and tired. But anyway, yeah. So I'm going um, to touch bases on that real quick. So when I, when I think of a quarterback, I want the most consistent – uh, play out of my quarterback position. I don't want you putting 40 points up for me one week and then when I need you and I expect you to put up at least 20, you, you give me a dud and you give me 8 or 10 points. So that's another reason Matt Ryan is a little bit lower on the list for me. And then the last one I want to talk about is Josh Allen. So when you think quarterbacks, nobody's like, oh my God, Josh Allen is a monster unless, you know, you're Bill's Mafia maybe. Um, but the dude is very very aggressive when it comes to playing on the field i mean he will truck over people he will get hit in the air you know he's diving over linebackers and stuff the dude is a crazy so he has a huge factor um in terms of rushing production on top of you just got stefan diggs and devin singletary is going into the second year so i think that he could be a top 10 quarterback again yes again because he did finish top 10 last year um but just with his surrounding talent and everything going on we're gonna put him just outside that top time right right and obviously there's also you know we could go all day long to talk about each and every quarterback but there's also these unknown entities obviously philip rivers is on a new team he's consistently putting up big numbers so it's not like he's he's a, a loser or anything like that so if you get him in the later rounds that could be a huge sleeper uh, or a guy like uh you know daniel jones we don't know how he's gonna be Guys like that, Joe Burrow, obviously, we don't know how he's going to be. He still has A.J. Green. I mean, they still have a pretty good – and then Joe Mixon. And, you know, so we don't know how they're going to be as well. So these are the top ten quarter quarterbacks, but those aren't the only good quarterbacks is what we're trying to say. So, yep, that's all we got for you guys. But listen, if you like the content that you saw today – 
if you like, you know, fantasy football, if you're going to try and be a winner in this in, in your uh, fantasy football league, you know, subscribe to us. We're not just real Detroit Lions fans. We're real football fans and real fantasy football fans. Man, we, we are in multiple leagues. We are constantly in the championships. We know what we're talking about, and, and, and we're ready to, to give to the people what we've learned over the years. So <laughs> click that subscribe button. Click that like button. And uh, obviously, if you're a real Detroit Lions fan, also subscribe. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys. 